And we're on. Leo Savage, right. thanks for joining us, Fitness and Consciousness. Thanks for having me, Ryan. This is cool. Um, looking forward to our discussion. Yeah, me too. Um, I've uh, known about you for a while, and um, you're doing a lot with the mace. That seems to be your, your main uh, exercise tool, and you're doing a lot of different flow with it. Um, and like you're creating your own method and uh, style. Uh, so can you like, tell us like what got you into the mace originally? And then like, what was the um, point where you decided I can actually do a lot more stuff with this than what people are doing right now? Okay. Okay. So there's actually two neat stories uh, about me getting into the steel mace. So I was in strength and conditioning uh, in a uh, UFC gym and they were really big into a uh, sports style kettlebells. And uh, you know, I just really wasn't too into it. I just, uh, for me, it wasn't like something that really sung to me. It wasn't something that I was passionate about. So I was always looking for different ways to train. Uh, matter of fact, I'm just an unconventional person. So, you know, I would always just try and make workouts out of odd things. So, you know, uh, in that path, I ran into a video of Brock Lesnar. You know, you know him. He's the WWF wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was actually segueing into mixed martial arts. He had a fight coming up. And I saw Brock Lesnar, like, hitting a monster truck tire with a sledgehammer. And, but he was doing it with one hand, which I had never seen before. And I just mm -hmm. thought, like, man, that guy's incredibly strong. So... It gave me the idea of like operating a sledgehammer with uh, one with one hand. I went to the gym, I goofed around with a sledgehammer and got into this like weird area where I was interpreting like martial arts moves, like things that I had done with like uh, a quarter staff or a sword, but with a sledgehammer. And I just thought it was, I don't know, it was super impressive. It was a lot of fun and it just like, energetically charged me to a point where I was like changing my habits. So I just really took notice that there was something there. All right. Second story. I'm trying to fall asleep. It's midnight. I put the Joe Rogan uh, podcast on YouTube. This is back in the day on the Joe Rogan podcast back in the day on YouTube. You, he used to do his own ads before he started his live. So he's like, Hey man, you got to get the alpha brain. You got to get the uh, primal bells. Hey, we sell this steel mace. And I was trying to go to sleep. I hear steel mace. I think, well, hey, the hammer is still mace. What, what's the deal? And so I, you know, tap some buttons on the keyboard. Next thing you know, I'm staring at the world's most ugly piece of fitness equipment, the jet black steel mace. And I just remember thinking like, that's it. Like it is not, it is not a sexy piece of equipment. And uh, especially the pictures they were using, you just, it was very, un, I was very uninspired, unimpressed. But what I did have is I had a company that made a tool who was into fitness. So I started researching on it and what do they do and uh, who are they and what's their strength and conditioning stuff. And uh, I uh, found Marcus Aubrey's Steel Mace Warrior Maker Workout. And I remember saying I would never do any of that stuff that he was doing with his steel mace. Regardless, I went to the gym and tried all that stuff. And uh, I found it challenging, you know, extremely challenging. Uh, that same gym I worked at, here's the, the finish of the story. They were having a kettlebell certification. Uh, Ken Blackburn was coming to town. He was going to teach us kettlebell certification. And like I said, I just wasn't passionate about it. I ended up skipping on the certification. And, uh, but I talked to Ken, and, I, and this was uh, the first person I'd ever talked to. I remember I said, hey, Ken, have you ever heard of steel mace? Mm -hmm. And Ken's like, yeah, man, I swing one every day. It's very therapeutic for the shoulders. I'll send you some. And I said, oh, man, you didn't have to do that. Uh, and he's like, no, I'm going to. I'm going to do it. He sends me a couple still mace, not directly to me, but at the gym I worked at. And I got my hands on the still mace for the very first time. And um, so, you know, that's how I found out about the still mace. And then along that same time, you know, when did I figure that I would be spending a lot of quality time with this piece of equipment? It was the very first day I picked up a mace. 
Now I've been working out with a sledgehammer, trying to do martial arts and movement and like create patterns and kind of relive my childhood through self-expression and swinging mm-hmm. swords and pretending I was a Power Ranger or a mm-hmm. Ninja Turtle or whatever. Uh, I pick up the steel mace and the first thing I notice is that the grip is like seamless. Like it's not clumsy like a sledgehammer. It doesn't have a wood grip, a rubber handle, you know. And uh, I remember thinking, I'm gonna fuck with that this thing for like 15 minutes. I'm gonna mess with the steel mace and I'm gonna go do the bench and the squats and the curls and the abs. And I don't know what the fuck happened, but hours go by. I'm talking two hours and my hands are shaking. And this is kind of why I stopped. My central nervous system was just on fire. I had a ton of energy, but my body was fatigued. And I just remember thinking, I just had so much fun. I was challenged mentally. I was challenged physically. The tool presented itself as a puzzle, like, can you figure out what to do with me? And I enjoy solving those riddles, you know, as a trainer or a coach. And that was the big day. That was the game changer. From then on, I have worked with the mace damn near every day since. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah. I, I know what you mean by you're just like looking at this thing and it's just kind of like a metal stick with a little knob on the end and, what can you do with that? And a lot of people are just like doing like all the simple stuff with it, which is good for the shoulders, you know, like the, the ten to tooth stuff. And, but then you're, you're just um, like dancing around with it and, and flowing with it in your um, method that you have, you call it steel mace flow, right? That's your own trademark. Uh, Correct. Thing. Yeah. yeah so the steel mace flow. Now that was like a combination of the personal work I'd done with the mace that, you know, what I like to call my personal practice and, in my personal practice, which was me goofing around with this sledgehammer, or this mace, and trying to make sense of it, that was my personal practice. And after about a year of me goofing around, uh, you know, I found out that the Yonet Academy offered a certification in the steel mace. And it just blew my mind that there was a strength and conditioning program on this piece of equipment that I was so down for. Not only that, but like talk about the stars aligning the motherfucking work, the certification was coming to my hometown. Mm. And uh, at the time, I was dirt poor. So the fact that it was in my hometown really made it something that, uh, you know, could actually happen. So, uh, you know, I take the certification and brother, I go deep in the Kool-Aid. I mean, I drank gallons of it. The system works, it was powerful. My body got tuned up. I mean, the system worked, which, which is just, I mean, it was just fantastic. Uh, so I had this system that Ana used, and I had this background of what I did with the mace, and they just kind of met in a way that they flowed together. You know, I had uh, these system of moves and these series of sequences that I would repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat, and... Um, it just over time became a form of like self-expression and uh, almost like theat- theatrics and dance and, you know, powerful movements. And not only was I like sculpting my body, but at the same time, I just started to notice this practice I was uh, participating in. It just started to feed, feed me mentally more than anything. I started finding out new things about myself uh, you know, uh, being able to, uh, deal with very, uh, you know, I had some problems of the heart. I went through a breakup and, you know, having that tool, this mace, not only something that I could get physical with, but really express myself in movement. It was a, a therapeutic tool as well. Um, and, and really, you know, i just fell in love with it and really enjoyed telling people about my story and teaching them the process that, uh, that I went through, you know, uh, you know, learning first, developing a personal relationship with your mace and seeing what natural movements you have and then saying, okay, well, you have these natural movements. Let's empower those natural movements. But instead of them just being movement, let's give them some structure and some theory 
So then we get to add like the, uh, the certification that I learned, the audit principles. I could really apply those structures to this body of work that you've already created. And I think when you put those two things together, you really get to work on something that you love, your natural movement, and you get to do so with integrity, this system over here. Um, now, for me, when you say like flow, I just think like fluid transitions, like a basic definition. Uh, the more moves you have in the still maze continuum, the more access you have to movement. I always say all the moves connect. And one of the reasons I think all the moves connect is somewhere in between the you know, academy system and my personal practice lives this body of work that I've created to help me reach my flow state, uh, bringing in a ton of my past life experience and like no matter what it was, theater, dance, when I say theater and dance, I danced in high school and I took drama in high school. Like it didn't go past that. Sometimes I'm a drama queen. So there's, <laughs> there's a, uh, but adding all those different things together, I said, man, Hey, I ha really have something special here. And uh, I used to think like, this is a really unique thing. Like uh, getting into this flow state of mind and working out, like this is a thing that maybe you could do, but it's going to be really hard to teach people this feeling that you get. It's just, it probably wouldn't be something that you could do. So as I was teaching people about this still maze, I really stayed over here towards this like strength conditioning proven area. Mm -hmm. But what I started to notice is no matter how secure this box was, I would put my students in, my students wanted out of the box. Yes. And they wanted to move freely. And that was with every student. Not one person said, I wanted to keep doing the same movement over and over and over. It was more, what's next, Leo? What's next, coach? What can we learn next? And it was just a beautiful thing where we got away from like the numbers of strength training. How much do you bench? How much do you squat? How much weight did you lose? And we got into this area of learning skills. Uh, you know, when my students come into class or into a seminar, they want skill acquisition rather than um, how do I buff up my biceps and pecs? And I'm no longer working out for my ego, but I'm working out for a feeling. And um, that's the world I really like to live in. And it's just important to understand that I like people to have their personal practice. Uh, and I like to empower that. Granted, we all have like rules we play by to keep, people safe in this, this particular mace practice. But uh, embracing that we are all different. We all have unique movements and empowering that is one of the reasons I teach us so maces to empower you, for instance, Ryan, to be the best Ryan you can be because we can work out every day, 12 hours a day for 12 years and you'll never be me, I'll never be you. So let's just cut the bullshit. Let's acknowledge there's a structured way to do things, there's your personal way to do things, and then there's this harmony in the middle. And if we can empower people to be in this harmony, uh, you'll probably hang on to it a little bit longer because we enjoy this area. Not that both areas aren't just as, are, are not uh, just as important. You know, this creative side feeds the strict like rule side, and the strict rule side helps get structure to the creative side. Yeah, I'm with you a hundred percent on that philosophy. It's 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 very much um, like what I do. So I'm I'm certified by Strong First as a kettlebell instructor, which is uh, you know, it's a uh, here's exactly how you do this. Your yeah. hand goes like this. You squat mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, there might be differences between my squat and your squat, but the the principles are the same. Mm -hmm. You do your cleans are like this, and your it, everything is just exactly this way. And it's this high standard. You have to do 100 snatches within five minutes. 99 is failing, period. There's no, well, you're a nice guy. We'll give it to you. But then my, so I have that, and I plan on sticking with them. But I call my own style freestyle. Okay. And I think by, like by definition, I, I don't think I could actually trademark it because freestyle is like a description. So I kind of chose that on purpose. So when I'm teaching people, I teach kids and adults. And so I'm trying to, like, I'll start off my classes, like, with uh, animal flows with the kids. 
And so like, here's how you do this, but then I want them to make up their own, their own transition. And, and they do. So it's like, Every how, time. How, yeah. how is this a uh, nine year old in, uh, coming up with cool stuff by himself? It's like, we just have this in us and all uh, sometimes just like crank up the music and let them flow with the kettlebell and do whatever they want. And one of my, he's nine, just turned 10, about to turn, just turned 10. Uh, he, he did something that I haven't seen before, or like I taught him like the snatch and I taught him like the figure eight, like between the legs. Uh, yeah. And he was kind of combining that. So I just cranked up the radio and I'm just observing. And he was like doing the snatch and at the top of the snatch, he was going back around and then between the back of his legs and then around to like, and he was sort he called it like the spider. And I was like, that looks cool. So he's, he's awesome. Kidding. And so I'm, I'm with you so much on here's this, strict technique that we can't we can't just like just go do whatever you want and expect that to work out fine but if you have these principles um like you're, you're saying these and then do whatever you want because i'm not trying to make them like me i'm trying to have them uh get, be like their uh, their own their own self that self-expression that you talked about um you mentioned uh like problems of the heart and for uh, a second there, I thought you meant heart problems as in like some kind of uh, medical issue. Uh, and when I was reading up through your uh, um, uh, Instagram post, I saw something about like a, a, you mentioned depression and, and how the uh, through these flows in the mace that it was able to get you out of that. And... Um, so I'm not sure, quite sure how to word my question. I have it in, in my mind, but so I, I think I have this this thing like where like uh, guys can like like a lot of like the, the toughest dudes that I know, the baddest jujitsu dudes, the baddest martial artists are like the nicest guys. They're like the softest guys, and they're they're just really nice. They're smiling, and they could fuck you up easily with one arm. But they're super nice, and they're and they're not willing to or they they're willing to talk about their feelings. They're willing to talk about what's actually going on with them. They're not, they don't have to pretend to be tough. They, they mm -hmm. can already beat up almost everybody. And so that stuck out to me, like the, you, you mentioned the depression, the mace helping you get out of it through these flow states. And then you just mentioned the heart thing. So can you just kind of like, I don't have an exact question, but can you just kind of like put that together? Like how- Yeah, let me dive into it a little bit. We'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Uh, just as hard as it is to ask, are forming to a question it might be as hard to articulate but great fucking question uh i really don't get asked this that much so let's see what happens um well yeah i'll just tell you the story um, i was in a relationship for eight years and uh the relationship ended and it was tough uh the biggest part of that relationship that sucked um i was not married i was fathering my ex's daughter and in the breakup, since we're not married, you know, I really, I don't get any visitation rights. So not only did I lose, you know, my ex, I lost the daughter as well. So, you know, it's just, it was horrible. And, you know, I would go, there's this thing that people do, it's called self-harm. And we all, I think, I think we all self-harm. Um, you know, some people cut themselves for me, like for instance, I have gotten tattoos and as a form of self harm, mm -hmm. some people get into drinking, some people get into drugs. There's a whole gamut of things people do when they feel a certain way. And I think the reason why we try to hurt ourselves is to, we can control that pain as opposed to like an emotional pain might be a little harder to control. You can't see it. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. So I would go to the gym, uh, you know, just feeling the, uh, you know, the energy from, you know, what had happened. And I would pick up my mace and uh, start to swing it. And with the goals, a lot of the times in these exercises were to get to a place where I couldn't do the workouts anymore, where I could, how much pain could I bear before I broke? Hmm. And, so for me, I got to choose what I was going to punish myself with, so to speak. Uh, going through those like dark times brought me a lot of light. You know, as I was going through 
that process. I record all of my work because I am my own coach. I have to see what I'm doing. I have to relive it. I have to videotape this new transition so I can watch it over and over and over. So as I'm going through this heartache, uh, I'm recording my work. And no matter how bad I feel, uh, I felt the work that I was putting out was just magical. It was beautiful. And so even though I had this like really negative thing going on, I had this counterbalance. I had like a yin to the yang. I had um, this tool that I was going into the gym to destroy my legs and destroy my arms and put myself through this quantifiable pain so I could take some type of control out of my life. But that's not what happened. I didn't find any pain. I just fought and found a lot of, a lot of love and, uh, a lot, found out a lot about myself in those moments. One thing I did in this journey was I just gave in to when I was in the moment, when I was swinging still mace and I had my music up and uh, the right song came on and I was hitting fatigue. Um, you know, I just, I felt like, I just felt as happy as I could possibly be. And I, ne I mean, I never felt, felt pain. I just felt like I was loved and like I was put here to do this thing. Um, and it really helped get me through some of, it helped me get through some of my darkest times. You know, we have this like labor of love. You go work in your backyard on something that's going to like your porch or your deck or you go grow a garden. Like you enjoy that work. And then after you do the work you you feel good and so while my object was to go to the gym and like i said cause some type of pain um instead my still mace this inanimate object became my dance partner and accepting that that was the journey i gave in a hundred fucking percent when i picked up my mace whatever i was going to go through I dove as deep as I could. I mean, if I wanted to fucking cry, I'd cry. You know, if I wanted to yell at the top of my lungs, I'd, I'd do it. I did it just a few days ago in the middle of Bryant Park in New York City. But I learned to express myself. And in learning how to express myself, that depression that I had inside, it wasn't inside anymore. I got to act it out. I got to deal with it. So for me, that movement was uh, a medicine for that depression. I hope that helps that yeah. question <laughs> yeah that that makes uh that that makes a perfect sense just we have these we store these um traumas of, of various sorts whether it's emotional trauma or literally physically physical trauma like i hurt my shoulder playing football or something like that but then there's also like you said like the um you know problems of the heart and of the maybe like i have a lot of tension at work and i'm just um, stress from work and then we can like through this self-expression where like it won't work if you're just doing um, or maybe it gives you the keys if you're just doing like here's the on it program we do this and then this and then this just this way but with with what you're doing it, it's like opening up this other the rest of the the world for it like uh, building the foundation for uh, that self-expression so people can um, put things together and then it opens things up that are like maybe hard to define. Maybe that's why it's kind of hard to put it in an exact uh, question or an exact answer. We can just kind of uh, allude to it and kind of uh, point, point to it. Cause like these different moves can like loosen up these different parts of the body or the mind where you're actually um, healing yourself in uh, all these ways kind of like yoga class, like, well, that's good for stretching, but something happens. Like yeah. after you do it for a while, you kind of like become that way. So you can see a, a girl at the grocery store and you can think, I bet she does yoga. She doesn't have to have yoga pants on, but she just, she'll kind of like be, she'll just have that uh, feel to her and you, and you can feel it at a distance. Um, something else I was looking at was like, uh, occasionally you post about like smoking weed and uh, your, uh, practice so do you do you find that that helps you get into these flow states do you do yeah 
Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, I love talking about the weed. First of all, let me say this. Before I say any of the benefits, first and foremost, I smoke weed because I like to smoke weed. It just happens to be some awesome benefits of smoking weed. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I often smoke. I am a high-functioning pothead. I accept the term. Mm -hmm. uh, I smoke all the time. There's probably I wake up and smoke. I work out and smoke smoke a lot is the weed does the weed help me find my flow it definitely does here's why just to put into perspective real quick if you've ever smoked music sounds real good music sounds good matter of fact turn that shit up i want to feel the bass it it makes me feel good i can feel the vibrations i dig it my workouts are done to music i work out to music here's what i like about music whenever i put on a song i commit i say I'm going to work out from the beginning of the song till the end of the song. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many reps I'm going to get in. I don't know how long the song is. Hopefully it's not a 10 minute techno song, <laughs> but um, I'm going to work out through the whole thing. And so really moving and expressing myself and having the sound and something that amplifies it is something that helps me uh, get into my, my flow zone. Um, I actually prefer if I'm going to flow, if I can, if I have time, like if I don't have anything to do, um, I like to uh, smoke a bowl, take an edible, do my movement practice, which is like just kind of loosening up, trying to figure out if I have like any injuries or anything I need to be cautious of. Um, and then I get into like maybe an hour long workout. And once that hour long workout's about over, that's when the edible kicks in. And uh, that's when I give it another round. and. All the magic happens. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't advocate people swing mace and smoke, but I do advocate you being yourself. So if you're into that, I'm into you being you. Yeah, it's a, a funny thing for me. I I used to I used to smoke, and then I quit uh, just over six years ago. Quit drinking, smoking weed, and everything. And I had like this really weird thing happen. I think. Uh, I've talked about it like different parts of it on, on my um, own show and or on my um, other podcasts, but uh, like I think I met like an angel or a bodhisattva or something like that, and she just like turned this dial in my mind, and it, it, it was this really strange experience. I, I knew her for a while, and then the day that I decided to quit smoking and drinking was the last day I ever saw her. Never heard from her again. Oh. That was this whole weird uh, thing. It was, uh, I, I really don't think she was a, a human or it, it was super strange. But so for me, it was like I, I, uh, I would, b before that, I'd like smoke and, and work out and I'd go out in the backyard with some buddies and um, we might, you know, have, we'd have a smoke, maybe drink a beer and then go out and start throwing some kettlebells around and uh, bring the barbell outside and just kind of, do stuff for a few hours throwing stuff and uh, and I definitely believe that you can get into these like it can help these flow states and a lot of uh, jujitsu guys high level jiu -jitsu yeah. guys are are into smoking before and then but then like some other people like like me now it's like now that would that, that's not my thing now and who knows what the future will be but uh, it was just kind of like I, I went from pretty into it to just over it and so is like have you been into it for a, a long time or yeah so when I was uh I used to fight in mixed martial arts and uh when I competed in mixed martial arts I was a super clean dude as far as like I didn't have any bad habits um I would have a beer or two uh after a fight and then uh, that was like kind of my limit. Like that was pretty much all I could handle. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so um, I, when I got out of uh, martial arts, I was, uh, I hurt my neck. and uh, had this like pretty gnarly thing happen. Uh, I had a cervical strain, you know, I had this weird like impingement, this weird nerve thing going on in the left side of my body to where my left uh, arm just didn't, uh, it, I couldn't lift five pounds up with my left arm. It was the weirdest thing. Mm -hmm. 
had this accident at work. Um, plus, I was like overtraining and like cutting stupid weight for these mixed martial arts fights. Anyways, it got hurt. They sent me to the doctor and they said, hey, you're fine, buddy. Here's some pills. Okay, got the pills. I come from a long line of addicts, took the pills, um, not thinking about the consequences, just thought I didn't want to be in pain after three weeks of taking uh, hydrocodones. I just was like, I don't think I'm in pain. I just don't think I can lift something up. So I'm not going to take the pills. I'm just going to see what I feel like. And I felt fine, except I was angry, irritable, and fiending for a pill. Hmm. so you know it's just like hey no fucking pills let's get the pills out of here um and i started smoking and uh that's that been smoking ever since yeah it does seem to really uh help a lot of people i guess there's like the fun, some people it's a medicine some people it's a poison uh, it's it's how you use it man it's how you use it like if your deal is like you can't eat i had a client and uh, I'll just fuck it. Let's tell the story. I had a client, and uh, I'm not going to say her name or anything like that, but she couldn't sleep. She couldn't eat. She had a bad attitude. She had inflammation all over her body. And I just said, hey, after, I mean, you know, we had, we had tried every, we tried a bunch of different things to help her out. Nothing, nothing really helped out. And I just said, fuck it, hell Mary. I was at the point where, like, I, was like questioning how much time and effort and energy I wanted to trade with her. Um, and so I just said, Hey, listen, I'll, I wish you'd smoke a joint. You would eat. You'd probably be a little happier. You'd probably get some rest. And uh, she says, my daughter, my son-in-law, but all these people. And now my coach are telling me to smoke a joint. And, um, and I said, look, Hey, I'm not telling you to smoke a joint. Should probably the wrong way to go about it, but you should look into CBD and there's some, some awesome things out there that you can get into that will help you. So she goes in, you know, goes through the process and I'll be damned if she didn't start showing up to workouts on time with a smile on her face. Her hands were like half a size smaller than they normally are. So it was like an extremely effective thing for her medicine, mm. um, poison, uh, I mean, you can definitely misuse marijuana. You know, you can take too many edibles before a fight and it can scare the shit out of you. Um, of course, it slows you down, your reaction time. So, you know, maybe operating heavy machinery is probably not a bad idea. So I just think it's all, it's all quantifiable. Like, you can make sense of it no matter what. Like, here's an argument for you. Like, I've heard this before. Not all movement is good movement. And to that, I say, you're fucking wrong. You tell that to a guy who's paralyzed from the waist down, that any movement, it, it, not all movements, good movement. That guy just wants to shake his pinky toe. Mm. Like anything for that guy is success. So it's all in how you present stuff. So I think if you present stuff with an open mind and the willingness to know that things are going to change, like we base our like workout modalities on like the scientific method, like, this is scientifically proven to work. Yes. By a scientist who reserves the right to be wrong in two weeks because information changes. So I think it's important to keep the glass half, half empty so you can continue to fill it up and continue to drink out of it. And when uh, science proves itself wrong, you won't be the only person going, you won't be the person going, uh, you won't be the person who was wrong and said there was only one way to do it. Yeah. End of rant. <laughs> Yeah. So your um, most when I was going through your uh, social media, the vast majority of it is May stuff, and then I, I see like the kettlebells, and um, I saw that you had uh, several certifications. Uh, so when you're like with clients or your your other workouts, um, like what other tools are you using? Like what are your like um, favorite ways to put workouts together? And like, what is it, what does, besides the, the mace, like what does your, your practice look like? Yeah. So, uh, I, I love telling people I work out with the mace 90, 95% of the time. I use the 10 and the 15 pound mace 
and I basically just dance around and practice fun movements and try and create new transitions and moves for my workouts. But the question was, what do I do outside? What do I do in that five to 10% window? I like doing body weight stuff. Uh, you know, I, I like uh, animal flow. It's a neat thing I'm getting into. It's like a, a form of calisthenics, you know, push up squats, moving around on the ground that uh, has a flow aspect to it. Um, I like kettlebells. You know, I like doing, but if I'm going to like play with a kettlebell or a barbell or a steel club or a bow rope or what a medicine ball or that door behind you, whatever I'm going to work out with, I just want to try to figure out neat shit to do with it. I want to figure out neat transitions. And like, for instance, I was doing a, um, a sit through into a tripod extension. You know, you're like basically on your back with one hand on the floor and the other hand, like aiming towards the sky. And I was like, I would love to do that with a medicine ball, an Indian club, a barbell, a tire, a mace, whatever. And so my typical workouts are just trying to find something neat to do with movement. I really don't write a lot of workouts. Um, I used to write a hell of a lot of workouts based on I had clients and we were still focusing on this box over here of like mindfulness and um, instead of like the skill acquisition area that, that I like teach now. Um, but I can write a pretty shitty workout. Uh, <laughs> I wrote a mace workout the other day. I know we're not talking mace, but uh, it was pretty horrible. Uh, it was called Fuck Your Legs. It's on my Instagram if you want to give it a try. It was, it was like a, a neat workout because it was like workout with 10 pounds, try and get through three rounds. And it seems totally doable, but it's, it's tough. Uh, I'm really fond of the barbell. I would say is probably my second favorite tool to use other than the mace or uh, body weight. I don't use it like a conventional uh, barbell. I don't like, for instance, do squats and um, bench press or deadlifts. I'll do a lot of landmine work. Um, you know, what's kind of neat about the barbell is, say you're dead center, right? Uh, and you take one step to the left, you would have a barbell that acts a lot like a steel mace, like something that's asymmetrically loaded. So you can make a barbell which is like this unit that is equal on both sides you can make it extremely difficult by stepping this to the left or to the right and i love this philosophy because life's never like incredibly fair it's never really presented to you like here's all the things that are going to happen step one step two step three step four there's usually something that happens in those steps while you're trying to accomplish get from point a to point b that you have to maneuver around or adapt to one thing i really like about the style of training the unconventional barbell training that we use that i've used i got certified at the honor academy in unconventional barbell by juan lehan john wolf um, it's just neat to take something and make it even harder than it could possibly be or than it normally is and uh make a functional training out of it I've never like picked up something and had an equal portion in the left hand and right hand. There's always like some type of bias, you know, uh, me recovering from this neck injury. I'm almost certain I use the right side of my body than the left side of my body, even in like a deadlift, for instance, a traditional lift or a bench press. Uh, the nice thing about uh, working with something that's asymmetrical or off or loaded off center is it tends to point out like the weak areas in your body. You know, if you move five pounds of force over to the right side of your body and you're having a lot of trouble, then that probably means, you know, the left side of your body is doing a lot of work. Uh, however, if you put that same weight on the left side of your body and you're right and you do just fine, well, you know, it's a, a big key to tell you how dominant you are on one side of your body versus the other. Yeah, I was, I was looking at that and I was... Um... I've done a lot of kind of weird stuff with barbells and then I, I noticed you, the unconventional barbell certification and I don't think I had heard of it before through the, um, on it. So like what kind of techniques are you doing besides, so you're doing like off center deadlifts and you're doing yeah. off centered presses, 
one-handed cleans, one-handed snatches, you know, a ton of landmine work. So check this out. Like for instance, you worked with the landmine? A little bit, yeah. So basically you just for people who might be watching, you take your barbell and you stick the end of it like maybe into a pivoting socket and you use the uh, the barbell now as a lever. So for instance, only one side goes up, the other side stays down. So in order to make this an effective workout, what we've done in the past is we've stacked up a bunch of plates on one side of the barbell. You press it, it's heavy. Okay. The Onnit Academy system, we like to work in high tension fields. So the idea was instead of using hundreds of pounds of weight by load, instead, let me grab this barbell and is use as much force as I can to stab it into uh, the hole or the landmine as like I go through these different ranges of motion. Um, in essence, I got to make this 45 pound bar feel like it had 200 pounds on it which is a an awesome way to train you know for you to be able to generate the force from within rather than it being uh put on you from from outside yeah. so i absolutely love the landmine portion of it being able to uh transition around the barbell is not something i ever thought uh, would be possible but uh, with a little bit of the creative process and uh, you know the uh, education from the on uh, academy system it's it's been a tremendous amount of fun um what else do we do we swing the the uh <laughs> i personally will swing the barbell like a steel mace i'll do the 360s mm -hmm. um there's a bunch of fun combos i mean it's a fun tool it's like a pretty tough opponent to move around in general mm -hmm. i mean just the length of it uh you know is uh it's tough yeah, it's really cool. There's, uh, it really seems like there's uh, just this new era of uh, like strength and conditioning stuff where we're not really worried so much about. Of course, it's always fun to just like put the heaviest weight over your head as as possible. Yes. I, 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 I like that. Just it is fun, and th that's that's cool. But like these different um, styles. And so you have your style, so people go, oh, then maybe I can like, think of, uh, uh, that reminds me of something else. And then, oh, I had this idea. I haven't seen anybody else do that. Yeah. And, and that just kind of like, it just seems to be like just growing and growing faster and faster. And Instagram is just um, a, a, an amazing source of, of, of people just that are, they, uh, they understand the fundamentals so they actually know how to squat properly, but then they they have like this whole thing that kind of blossoms out of that. And, um, it, it's just such a, a cool time to be a trainer and a student. And, uh, so what do you see that's like next for your, for your training? Do you, uh, ah. is there something else that you're like? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, so uh, originally when I got started in the steel mace game, to me, I thought the ultimate goal would be I need to certify people in steel mace. Uh, well, the only people I really knew at the time who certified uh, any groups in steel mace was the Honor Academy. So uh, it's been like a quest of mine to fulfill the role for the Honor Academy system. And uh, in that quest, I've made a name for myself and that um, I'm able to travel from like state to state and teach my my workshops and uh, you know they've been success successful and like any practice you want to continue to evolve what's the next step what's the next step well uh, i still want to facilitate the goal to be able to teach a still mace certification but the certification that i would really like to teach is the skill acquisition the still mace flow how do i flow how do i teach people how do i flow mm -hmm. art to flow um so that's the next big project we're hoping to release late this year or early next year, the Steel Mace Flow certification. Cool. Yeah, um, yeah, that's been asked about for a good amount of time. I think I've got just about everything in play to make it happen. I've got all the uh, education. Um, yeah, so uh, we've got the process kind of written out. We're just uh, waiting to launch, I guess. Yeah, very cool. <clears throat> and I. I think for now, 
I, I, these days that I'm, I'm more impressed by um, people's certifications than like, if you said, yes, I have a, a, a master's degree in uh, exercise and uh, physiology, that's cool, I don't have one. But what, what can you actually do? Because I've seen like over and over again, these people with a master's degree in, in exercise aren't very good at exercising. They're, it's, they, they don't know how to coach a squat. Of course, there's, there's tons of exceptions to that. But, yeah. but if, uh, if somebody has a strong first certification, they can squat. I don't have to know anything about them other than that to say, okay, I'm going to need some help at this workshop. You're certified by strong first. Cool. Or if I'm teaching like something else, like a flow or mace, Oh, you've been training with uh, Leo for six months and, and he says you're, you're good to teach good enough for me. I don't have to know anything else about your education. You said, it. and, um, like I'm, I'm putting together, uh, this would be my third one that I've done like this where I'm having, uh, uh, six instructors and then I have an herbalist, uh, also who's going to take us to foraging for, uh, herbs that support the musculoskeletal system. But it's this two day workshop and I have uh, six instructors, like two ninja warriors, um, husband and wife, they're awesome. Um, uh, and, uh, a capoeira guy and a, a movement guy like Ido Portal style and and then me and then a, a yoga teacher and so like I, I see I know these I know that they're these really great teachers and so I'm like will you come and teach at my workshop they say yes and then I'm like great well in about a week or so let me know what you're going to teach I'm not saying will you teach handstands will you teach this or that it's like I, I want you to come and teach at my workshop you have two classes over this over these two days, 